What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Profoto and today we are going to be covering clamshell lighting for headshots. So clamshell lighting can be used for lots of different types of photography. You might see it used in beauty and fashion. Uh, but for today, we're going to be focusing on how you utilize it for headshots, some best practices, some different ways that you can have uh, different types of control or how to work with you know what you have depending on what gear you're working with. So uh, we have a couple of different lighting setups. We're going to try them all out. We're going to kind of move some things in and out. But in the headshot realm for lighting, what you want to try to do is stay relatively soft in the clamshell world. So one of the things that you that you find sometimes uh, people do for clamshell lighting is beauty work. And sometimes you'll see them using stuff like magnum reflectors or harder light sources. And that, that could be your style. And I'm not going to tell you not to do something like that just because it wouldn't make sense. Um, but one of the things that you're going to find a lot of times is it's harder to control some of the harder lights for certain types of people's faces. So, you know, someone may not have, you know, the best complexion or something like that. And you want to always try to make sure that you've kind of bulletproofed yourself for something like that. So what you're going to find a lot in the headshot world is you're going to want to use softer light sources. For the most part, the harshest or crispest light source that I would think you would see a lot of people use is something like a beauty dish, which we are going to use today. We have a beauty dish um, right here set up uh, an OCF beauty dish. Uh, we're going to do a couple different setups with the beauty dish. We're going to try something with a two foot octa. So you have a still a smaller light source, but um, not with a, a deflector plate inside of it. So it's more direct as opposed to indirect like a beauty dish is. Uh, we're going to throw another light up underneath so that you can see how you can use uh, a second light to control it as opposed to using a reflector. Or if you don't have a second light, we're going to show you how to do the clamshell lighting with a reflector. That way you don't have to worry about buying another light. You could just go the uh, clamshell, or you could go the reflector and light route. And then we have a really big modifier, a big four foot octa. We're going to do, a, we're going to, like I said, we're going to kind of move in and out. So we're going to do a traditional clamshell uh, butterfly setup where it's, you're kind of shooting right through the clamshell. Uh, and you get that little butterfly um, shadow up underneath the nose. I couldn't spit that word out to save my life. And then we're also going to move off to the side to where it's more of a loop style. Uh, although, actually I take it back, it's not a loop style. It's still kind of in the idea of a butterfly light. But when you move a butterfly light to the side and keep the person's face pointing towards it, it's more a, of a paramount light. Uh, because you lose the butterfly shape, therefore it's not necessarily butterfly light anymore. So. In the meantime, let's see what's everybody in the house. Oh, what's up? Annette from Sweden, hello. Carl, what's up? Street and art photography, what's happening? Oh, Patrick, hey, what's up? And Danny, what's up, man? So cool. We're gonna start off uh, simply with uh, this fun little rig that I built for this just so we can move things in and out. So it's essentially a roller stand with a two foot uh, OCF beauty dish on it. And like I said, we're gonna move the modifier in uh, with different modifiers. And then here at the bottom, I actually have a Profoto, uh, I think this is the medium uh, reflector. Uh, it's white and the back of it's sun silver. I'm not using the sun silver side. We're just gonna use the white reflected side. Uh, and I just have it in uh, a standard like clamp for reflectors. So, and then I've got it super clamped to the light stand with a grip arm. It's holding it out. So I can kind of boom out and have some room to work right here uh, with Kate, who I'm going to be photographing here in just a second. Uh, so I have some room to work with her right here without light stands getting in the way. And also it's going to give me the ability to move it over. So like when we do the traditional straight shoot through butterfly light technique, we'll be able to do that. And then when we want to move it off to the side, it'll be one of those things that we can kind of just easily pivot like this to get more of that paramount look. So. Uh, lighting wise gear, the things that we're going to be using today, uh, I have a B10 plus on this boom arm right here with a two foot, uh, OCF beauty dish. It is in white, uh, like I said, white reflector here on the bottom. Uh, we also have a two foot octa, a one by three strip box. I'll explain what we're going to use that for. And then we also have a four foot octa that we'll be playing with as well as, as well as another B10. So, so let's, uh, let's get dirty. You ready to rock and roll, Caitlin? Yeah, totally. So. One of the things that you're, you're going to want to try to figure out whenever you're doing all this stuff is your lighting ratios, how close you're going to want your reflector to the subject's face. 
A lot of that's going to be dependent on what your subject actually looks like. Uh, do they have a narrower face? Do they have a wider face? Uh, are their eyes a little more sunken in to where you need to get the reflector a little bit closer and fill that in? One of the other things you want to try to remember too is to use something more of the long lines of a square as opposed to another round fill coming from the bottom mostly because you're trying to mimic what would happen naturally in the real world. There's not a lot, I, at least I can't imagine too many places that you would run where the light would be coming down from here and then you would also be getting a round light from down below. So you want to try to keep the, the light source shape relatively similar to the size of what things would reflect from the bottom. So, you know, if you're outside on a whole bunch of concrete, that concrete would reflect back up, but it would be a, a big, soft, kind of a square shape reflecting in. So that's kind of why we're going this route with the, the reflector and that's why you see a lot of people use the reflectors. So and then we have the beauty dish set up right here. So I'm going to bring Caitlin in. So for the first shot, hopefully you guys can see through this bad boy. I'm going to try to angle it up in a way that makes sense. Let's see. Pardon me, Caitlin. I'm sorry. Uh, let's get that there so you guys can see the screen. Oh, you know what I did? I took my battery off my B10 to charge it last night. Let me grab a battery. I totally thought I grabbed one already. There we go, full charge. Perfect, power this bad boy on. And we're gonna leave that. We're gonna leave that just like that because I'm gonna use a TTL shot to set my uh, light. So let's get Kate in here. So stand up for me, there we go. So I like to shoot headshots, uh, and, and this is a personal preference, but I always like to shoot headshots just like a little bit below uh, the eye line, just so the camera's slightly looking up at the person. It's just, uh, it's kind of a power and presence kind of thing, at least for me. Um, it, whereas, you know, if you shoot down on somebody, it can kind of make them look uh, submissive. And you don't necessarily always want that, especially if you want somebody to look, you know, a little more prominent. So let's get this in here on this headshot. We're going to go vertical for this. Just going to make sure that my camera is good and ready to record. rock and roll. Perfect. So um, camera settings wise, F8, ISO 160, uh, shutter speed of 250 of a second. I've got Caitlin in there. So let's go three, two, one. Perfect. So that was our TTL shot. Actually, actually is right on the money. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. So that's going to be, yeah, you can, you can step out for a second. So this is a shot of Caitlyn clamshell style. And what we should do, we should take another one, Caitlyn, where I take the reflector out all together. That way we can A, B it. Um, is your computer dim? Uh, my computer is not, oh, you know what it just did? Uh, there it goes. Okay. Okay. The, uh, I accidentally clicked the crop tool. So let's do another one really fast where we drop the reflector down. So I'm just going to. Can you just leave the yeah, you can just, you, you can just leave it up for right now. Let me, let me slide the super clamp down. All I'm going to do is slide the super clamp that's holding this thing up so it doesn't really affect the shot at all. It'll probably be in there a little bit, but definitely not at the prominence that it just was. Here we go, Caitlin. And then I've got the, yeah, and I've got the power level locked into place. So it should look, uh, it's the same flash power, so we should be able to A, B compare with and without the reflector underneath. Come a little, there, there we go, Caitlin. Three, two, one. Oh, hold on. Oh, that was a blurry shot. I didn't focus. Come back to me. Three, two, one. There we go. So now we're good, Caitlin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I don't know what I'm doing with my face today. Yeah. <laughs> I generally don't know what I'm doing with my face. So here's an AB shot right now of just just clamshell style lighting. Let me kind of slide this thing over out of the way so we can talk for a split second. The beauty of my portable clamshell rig. So when you're looking at this, you can see how much the reflector really starts to bring some light back into uh, Caitlin's like eye area. So you can see the deeper shadows under the neck, deeper shadows under the, uh, under the nose and a little bit with the eyes. The reflector is going to bring that back in. If we go to the loop right here, Oh, I kind of misfocused. That's, that's super fun. I'm gonna have to do better, but the reflector from what you can't see with the focus is there's not really, it's not really prominent because you don't want that catch light to pop up from the bottom and be something that's prominent in a shape that doesn't necessarily make sense, which is the reason, like I said, we're using something like a square right now. So then we have over here where, and check it out, I got focused that time, which is super good news for me, right? 
So for here, you it's definitely not as prominent. Like I said, you can see the shadows are a lot deeper right here, a lot more contrast. And that's just something that you do with a simple reflector. And if you don't have a reflector, you can always go with a piece of foam core. If you have something like a, a posing table or some other, you could use um, like one of these little tether tables if you wanted to. You could bring that up there, set a piece of foam core on it, or honestly, you could put some, some foil or something over that if you wanted to, if you needed to make something quick and dirty. So, but that's really, really cool. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to change the, um, the reflector out and we're gonna bring in a second light. And so what this is gonna allow us to do is give us a little more control over those uh, reflections. And so what we're gonna use is a B10. So let me actually take this off right here. So let me take my reflector setup off. So what we're gonna use here is a B10. That's definitely gonna fall in a second. Um, with a one by three strip box on it. And this is gonna allow us just to um, kind of maintain that square reflected shape that I was just talking about uh, for the, uh, the catch light. And I'll have to, I'm gonna have to make another adjustment on that in just a second, so. But I just wanna kind of get it in, it's in the biz. There we go. And once again, I'm gonna have to adjust this a little bit, but I think that's pretty good. Let's just come over a little bit with the, and this little this little rig is kind of a nice setup, honestly. It uh it allows me to kind of maneuver this in all the directions that I might want to maneuver it. So it's just a combination in case anybody's wondering. I'm using a super clamp and a a couple of grip heads and a grip arm. So this should right here give me a little bit more control. So I'll I'll be able to add as much light as I want to underneath to fill in whatever shadows I want. So if I want to go with like a one to two ratio or a one to three or one to four ratio, you can do that. And we're gonna play with that just in the little AB compare them there. And then we'll just goof around with a couple other modifiers just so you can kind of see what the differences look like. So let's, uh, let's do that. So you wanna come back over here, Caitlin? I'm gonna slide my handy dandy headshot rig back over here. So perfect, just make sure that we're locked into place here. Excellent. So I've got my lower light turned on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another TTL shot because there's two lights involved now. But what we're gonna do for the second one is we're gonna go to group B and I'm gonna turn it down one stop. So it'll be one stop lower than whatever the, the light above it is. So here we go, okay, three, two, one. Oh, three, two, one. My, uh, my camera does this really weird thing and I don't know what it is. It's definitely it, it, where it like half fires sometimes. I don't know if there's like a firmware update for my camera I'm missing. Right back here, Caitlin. Three, two, one. Hmm, it's really mad. Pardon me for a second, party people. I gotta, there it goes. Now it wants to fire. Oh, and looking, hold on. Yep, yeah. and it did it in a really awkward way, so I apologize. So let's. TTL, let's go down and stop there. Three, two, one. Okay, so that's turned down at uh, one stop. So, so let's see, we're at power level 5.7 at the top and 5.7 on the bottom. The reason they're gonna read the same is because this is a B10 at the bottom and a B10 plus at the top. So you can see right now, there's way too much light coming from below. So it's, it's almost lower lit. So what you wanna do is you wanna start to bring that down until it, until it evens out a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is bring this jammer down another stop. Here we go. Cool, you wanna jump back over here, Caitlin? Yeah, I, I still need you. We're still working through this. She's a runner, guys. I. So come back, there we go. Let's go back up here. Three, two, one. So there we go. We started to bring it down a little bit more and we're gonna be able, we can flip over to manual mode and we can bring that down a little more. So I'm gonna go ahead and take another shot real fast, one more stop down. So you can see the nice thing about having this is giving you the amount of control that you have over, I kinda have you, there we go. There we go, there we go. So the nice thing about going this route, I'm, we're good now, Caitlin, thank okay. you. Good. Yeah. The nice thing about going the route with the, uh, I, mean, I keep wanting to get stuck inside this rig. So it's, uh, it's larger than I was expecting. 
So the nice thing about going the softbox route is having the ability to control how much depth that you're gonna get inside those shadows. So if we go like here, I took a couple just so you can kind of see it kind of build. So as the lower light starts, to, actually let's go full screen here, maybe we can, there we go. So as the lower light starts to even out in power and it looks a little more reflected, you can see that the shadows are still nicely filled in, but there's not as much light coming. And I could probably, it's probably pointed honestly a little bit too much towards her arms. So that's showing it a little more lit. But this is the nice thing about going the, the, the light uh, with a strip box route is the fact that you have the ability to fully control how much of the light and shadow that you're actually getting in your subject's face. So once again, if you have a subject with maybe deeper set eyes, it might be a nice thing to do is go the route with a second light. That way you can, you know how much light you're blasting back up into the subject's face. Once again, if we go and look into the catch lights here, it's more of a square look down at the bottom. So it's, it feels a little more natural as far as where that reflected light's coming from, especially and then we go back here. Once again, there is a little bit of that square there. It's just, uh, it's starting to hide a little bit more, but still really, really natural. This, the shadow uh, contrast is diminished a lot, which is really, really cool. So, but really, really neat stuff. So, and that's some stuff that you can do with a beauty dish and just another light source. So this is a really, really great sh uh, uh, setup for headshots. Uh, whenever I am, doing headshots on location, I generally go beauty dish. And honestly, I go the reflector route. Uh, a lot of the times I'm pretty happy with the uh, setup I can do. And that way too, I don't, I'm, I'm not you know, bringing extra lights for sometimes I just don't want to think about all that kind of stuff. But if you are a little bit more of a control freak, which I think a lot of photographers are, it's, it's the reason that we love being in manual mode and being able to take control of every little thing, going with a second light might be a great move just because once again, you can decide how much you need to light you need to give back to the subject. You can do the same thing with your reflector. The same thing is doable with the, with the reflector. You're just going to have to, it's gonna be about kind of how you angle it back towards the subject. You want the angle to be relatively similar to the angle of, of the light coming out, um, but you can, you can play with your angles here. You can bring the light a, bit, a little bit closer, a little bit further away. So you can do that kind of stuff. The only place that you may find that you run into an issue with a reflector is, you know, at some point, depending on how close you're getting, it could start creeping into the frame. Uh, I generally shoot headshots. Uh, I shot headshots with Peter Hurley for a whole bunch of years in New York City out of a studio. And so I've, I've adopted the, the horizontal uh, headshot thing myself. So this wouldn't be, isn't so much of an issue for me just because I have a little more latitude uh, up and down. But if you shoot your headshots in a more of a portrait setup, the downside to the reflector route is, oh, I knew it was gonna chase me. The downside to the reflector route is you're going to only have so much space that you can move. Now, you could change the finish. You could go with something like a silver reflector underneath that way you you're a lot more efficient with the light hitting it and popping back up it'll be a little bit more pronounced but you could go that route uh you would probably get results uh kind of more like this one right here are we on the computer screen for saying Kellen? a silver reflector uh pop back into onto the subject is probably going to give you something that feels a little bit more like this shot right here which once again one of the reasons why it, here just in case it wasn't up there just yet this shot right here is to me what using a silver reflector is going to look like it's going to diminish those shadows quite a bit you're also going to get a lot more um of that reflector in that catch uh catch light so let me see if you guys have oh heads up um I, just like every single week i work from home and my my daughter's about to make an appearance what's up honey no not right yet honey buns i'm working <laughs> cool. So let's see if you guys have any questions. Hey, Matt from Midwest Photo here. The live stream looks great. Hey, thanks, Matt. I appreciate it, man. Let's see. Greetings from California. What's up, everybody? Could you let me know what kind of grip arm and grip head you're using? Nice rig. Uh, so I think my reflector holder is by Westcott. I think, I know we don't make one. Um, let's see. I thought there was a sticker here somewhere on it. I've had it forever, and 
Oh yeah, there it is. It's yeah, there's a little Westcott logo on the on the metal bracket right there. So it's by Westcott. I'm not sure. And then all my grip stuff I like to use is Avenger. So I like my my roller stands an Avenger. My grip arms are Avenger. My grip heads are Avenger. So it's just uh, you know what though there there's another company out there that makes a hex head uh, grip arm that you should check out because the nice thing about that is when you screw your light into it, um, it will stay in place and it won't rotate and stuff like that. So. Very, very cool. So, but yeah, it's a, it's a cool little rig. It's easy to kind of roll around and do exactly what it is that you might want to do. So, but once again, having that ability. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play around with a couple of different modifiers. So we've done everything, and I think we're gonna stay with the B10 on the bottom just to, uh, just because I'll have a little bit more control. And then I will be moving uh, over to another modifier right here. So I think we're gonna go uh, with a two foot Octa, actually, yeah, we're going to go with a two-foot Octa. That way, just off the bat, we can tell the difference between using a OCF beauty dish, like the two-foot beauty dish with a two-foot Octa. So you're going to have an indirect light source in a beauty dish, and you're going to have a direct light source in the Octa. So let's change that out right there. And the nice thing is, once again, you want to try to stay with softer light sources. It's going to be safer for, for most people, um, especially uh, people who don't want you to accentuate you know, any age lines or anything that they may have on their face, which, you know, most people don't. So, unless someone just looks really cool and rugged, then maybe that's what they want. So, for the most part, you're going to stay in the softbox realm. And so, people may ask, should I use a two-foot Octa? Should I use a two-foot beauty dish? We're going we're gonna to show you the comparison right now, and that way you can decide. So, cool, Caitlin, can I get you back over here? Sweet. So, and then we'll do, we'll do A-B comparisons of both. So let's, let's bring. I hear you're gonna take my age lines away. I'm gonna take your age lines away. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just with lighting, not with uh, walking around real life. So sorry, I apologize. No, I'm no magician. Hey. Just follow me with the light. Yeah, exactly. I'm always lit. Um, there we go. So TTL shot B is down two stops. So we go three, two, one. So cool, there's a two foot octa, and then stay right here, Caitlin, I'm gonna bring it down, uh, be down two more stops, just to... Perfect. So let's go, let's go compare to the two foot octa route to the beauty dish, <laughs> this big red. <laughs> I totally keep forgetting to move it so I can actually talk to you on screen. So, Here's your two foot Octa. Let's go with the, the beauty dish. So I will say um, the two foot Octa um, kind of keeps the light all in one place. It all stays relatively diffuse. So you can see that the actual background uh, stays pretty saturated. Whereas with the beauty dish, what you can have with the light kind of creeping around that deflector is a little more light hitting the background. So for the most part, we were all in the same spots, but the beauty dish just always have a, has a little bit more punch to it. You can see it kind of starts to sculpt out a little bit more here and here. It's, it's kind of nicely directional. Let's go here. So catch light in the eye. They both are going to look really, really similar because they're, they're both, there we go. Come on back. They're both round uh, shaped light sources. So you're going to get that nice natural looking shape in the eyeball on both of them. So for the most part, they look really, really good. I think you just see a little bit more specularity, a little bit more shine on the lip here. Um, it's pretty evenly diffused over here. So you can do really, really great stuff with either a two foot octo or a two foot beauty dish. They're going to look great. The, the hardness level of them is going to be pretty similar because they're the same size. You're just going to have a little bit, uh, the light's going to fall a little bit differently and less of a hot spot. So you would have less of a hot spot with your beauty dish just because it's a deflector. Let's see if you guys have any questions. Let's see. Sir, can you please explain the correct distance between model and background for a beauty shot? Um, well, for a headshot or a beauty shot or really anything that you're using a um, thanks for the question, by the way. Uh, for anything that you're using a soft, a soft box on, you want to try to get the light as close as you can. So 
And then the distance between the subject and the background is subjective. So if I want more light to hit the background, I'm gonna put the subject closer to the background or I'm going to put a light on the background, depending on how I, depending on if I have the light available to me uh, or if I want that or not. So subject to background is gonna be a personal preference thing. Uh, you should always try to get your subject as close to the light as you can without having to, um, while keeping the light where you want it. That way, uh, softness wise, the, the light shape in relationship to the subject is super close. Therefore, you're gonna be able to maintain the softness, but you also wanna make sure that you're not getting like light modifiers cutting into the person somewhere and you have to do like extra Photoshop work to get it out. So, uh, Caitlin, you were probably a foot and a half, maybe two feet from. Uh, you could, you could. So if I bring this back over here, I haven't moved the camera at all. So if I bring this right back over here, kind of where Caitlin was, She's probably from, yeah, from, yeah, I'd say she's two feet away from the, from the light. And that's just going to keep her in a place. And then for the shots that we're taking, she's probably another four feet from the background. So two foot from the light, four feet from the background. Uh, and this is just kind of just a personal preference. I wanted a little bit less light to fall on the background. And so that's why that's that. Let's see. What size do you prefer on Beauty Dish? Um, honestly, I just use the uh, I just use the Pro Photo Beauty Dishes. I've never used any of the like the really big ones that are out there. Um, so, and honestly, I like the I like the two foot uh, OCF Beauty Dishes just because they they collapse down really really small. I have the aluminum Beauty Dishes that can take like the grids and all that kind of stuff too, which I love. But the downside is for whenever I have to travel, the the case that I carry them in is kind of cumbersome. So. I really like the two foot size. I think it's really, really great for especially headshots. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not overly big. Granted, we have a four foot octa that we're gonna shoot with too, just so you can kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like with a big modifier, because why not, right? So, uh, but I like the two foot uh, octa size. What is the white balance on those lights? Uh, I am doing a big no-no. I think I'm shooting auto white balance on my camera, um, which I believe, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm actually set to 6,300 Kelvin on my camera. Uh, so I think most pro photo lights are in the 59 to 6,100 range. Uh, I've just recently started shooting a little bit warmer uh, just because I want to. So I'm at 6,300 Kelvin on my camera. So I have that kind of locked into place. Yeah, good, 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 good catch, uh, Adam. So let's see, um, Pakistan in the house, what's happening? Uh, I want to know the setup on that C-stand. Okay, cool. So let me pull the C-stand back so you guys can see how I'm doing this real quick before we start kind of riding into some other uh, light modifiers. So, so this is a, I forget, it's, it's like a, a, an Avenger low roller. I can't, this got the name. I thought it had the sticker on it somewhere to tell me what it was. It's probably hidden behind sandbags and stuff. So it's a... Uh, an Avenger low roller with the with the wheels. It's got a uh, I'm super clamped here with uh, with uh, it's just a super clamp and a grip head here going into the arm. So you have your grip head right here set up, and then uh, I have the grip arm going through, and then I just have the B10 on the end of the grip head. So uh, on the end of the grip arm, the end of a grip arm fits perfectly onto your, your light stand setup. And then I have a junior boom, an Avenger junior boom here, or mini boom, I can't remember, it's the D600. Um, and that's what I have my B10 Plus kind of boomed out on. So it's nice, it's, it rolls around, it's pretty smooth. I've got, I always keep all my other super clamps on this stand just so I can grab one really quick. So ignore like this one and the one that's really low. This is just the super clamp that I'm using, that way I can go up and down and, and vary my, my light. So that's my, that's my uh, clamshell light rig setup. So I'm glad, glad people appreciate it. I poured my heart and soul into it. So, but it's nice to have it all in one stand. I can keep it consistent. It's really, really cool. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, cool. So we've shot two foot Octa. We've done the two foot beauty dish. Let's get a little crazy and let's throw a four foot Octa on there. Now I'm, I'm probably gonna have to position it a little bit because I don't have the ceiling height that I liked that I would, you know, prefer to be working with here, but we'll make it happen. So, and then, so we'll be able to kind of tell, like once you start getting into like deeper, uh, 
larger modifiers, the softness is going to increase quite a bit. You're going to get, um, you know, smoother, smoother shadows and stuff like that. A lot more wrap. And then we're going to turn the bottom light on and off too, and see if at that point, if the if the clamshell portion of the light even matters. So, let's go with this. Oh, you know what? Let's position this up a little bit because I know it's gonna it's gonna hit. So. Got a sandbag on the end of the boom arm because I'm also know I'm going to need that. Let's go here. I'm gonna try to lock this thing down so it doesn't spin on me too because this forefoot gets heavy. There we go. Forefoot's on. So let's start booming up and then I'll kind of I'm gonna rotate it downwards a little bit or it's a, it's probably gonna rotate itself downwards honestly. Uh, let's see. This sucker's heavy. There we go. Oh, I knew I was going to do that. I'm, I'm really, really good at this, guys. I promise. I'm a professional. So let's go up the forefoot right there. I'm going to bring my two-foot octa back, or my two-foot, or my one-by-three strip box. I apologize that I'm calling it the wrong thing. And so this is going to be a much larger clamshell lighting setup. So this should, actually, I could probably come down a little bit position my light forward a little bit more. Right now it's kind of pointed a little bit too down for me. So it's kind of just walking the line of like where I have headroom for this. So pardon me while I bumble and fumble for a second party people. There we go. Cool. I think we should be good there. Cool. You ready to try this, Caitlin? All right. So four foot octa should be out of my frame. Tis. 6300 on my Kelvin. Okay, so we're gonna take another TTL shot. So I got my. So take a tiny step to your left, Caitlin. Right there. Uh, too, 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 tiny, too big. There we go. Back, 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 back. A little bit. There we go. Perfect. So here we go with the four foot octa. Three, two, one. Oh, and then my camera starts doing that thing. It's weird. It's like it's like this delayed pause. Come back to me. Three, two, one. Yeah, it's, it's mad at me. Three, two, one. There we go. Four foot octet, actually really, really pretty. And then let's go back here. And then we're going to take two stops down on the lower light, just so we can compare. Perfect, thank you, Caitlin. You're welcome. Like I said, I've been having this weird thing where my camera like acts like it takes the shot, but it like doesn't fire, like it'll either half fire the, oh, hey, our, uh, our water balloon string was still up there from last week. Um, either like half fires. I don't know really what's going on. I gotta, I gotta kind of figure that thing out. Oh, hey, quick question. Uh, ain't gonna lie, that stand setup is nice. It's, I, I think it's kind of rad. I think it's, I think it's fun. I'm glad that you guys love my like grip stand building abilities. Maybe I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna start building funky stands and putting them out there. So, um, let's see. <laughs> uh, can you send me your Nikon? I, I'm good, man. I've shot Nikon. They're great cameras. They just, I don't like the way they feel in my hands. So let's see. Sorry if you answered this one before, but what's the light uh, intensity difference between both lights? Two stops? Yeah, so I've, I've shot a couple of them. Thanks, Kate. I shot, I shot a couple of different shots. So um, for the most part, I'm keeping uh, the lower light two stops lower than the, the higher light. Uh, and then the, I take a second shot where we go four stops lower. So just so you can, we can see the differences between how you can vary them. And then, uh, so I've done that with the beauty dish. I've done that with the four foot octa now, and we've done that with the two foot octa. So we'll be able to compare both of those. So, um, let's see. Oh, did I miss something? Something about, uh, tubes. Sorry, William. I see you're replying to somebody about something. So. I, I, might, I may have missed uh, a question. If I missed a question for you, just ask it again and I'll see it again. So let's go four foot octa. I think I caught you right at a blink, Caitlin. So that's, yeah. that's super fun. Yeah. So here you start going with more uh, with a four foot octa and a two foot octa, just so you can kind of see the difference. Catch lights look really, really similar once again, but the difference is you're gonna start getting a lot more wrap. You know what I didn't do? I didn't take a shot of the four foot octa without the reflector, but we'll do that in a minute, just because I want to see at what point does having 
the un having such a large modifier even matter to having the reflector underneath? My guess is it still matters, but it's always good to know. So, uh, but really, really beautiful stuff. The forefoot obviously is gonna give you a lot more coverage. You can see it wraps a lot more here. Uh, it's just a really smooth, soft light. Uh, once again, because of the diffusion, you can see that, uh, the and, and because of the diffusion and how close Caitlin is, the light, the light falls off a lot faster back here, so it starts to get a lot darker. Whereas with the beauty dish, the light was kind of creeping around the edges of the deflector. So that light's actually coming out a little more powerful as opposed to the light that is hitting the deflector and going around and hitting Caitlin. So that's why with something like the beauty dish shot, like right up here, let's get something that's comparable right here, this shot. That's why with the beauty dish shot right here, you're gonna start getting a little bit more light on the background, just once again, because the light that's coming from around the deflector isn't being stopped by anything, so the intensity is higher. So, um, but because the, the light's coming out really, really even from the both soft boxes, you're getting relatively um, consistent backgrounds. So, let's see. It's crazy soft with a four foot octave. My, the four foot octave for me is probably my favorite soft light modifier other than my umbrellas. I use my umbrellas a lot, uh, my shoot through and my white umbrella with a diffusion panel. But other than that, my four foot octa, if I know that I'm using a soft box or an octa box, this is generally the one that I use. I mean, I beat the heck out of it. It's got, it's just nasty beyond all compare. But the diffusion, the diffuser is beautiful. It's still super clean. Uh, I think I've even punched a hole in it somewhere at some point just because I'm a, 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 a nincompoop, but it, it keeps sticking. So let's see. Um, yeah, for the most part, you're gonna see Profoto recommending daylight, but like I said, our, um, our lights are 5,900, 6,100-ish. So just as a, as a reference for our, our light temperature. Um, that's, and they've always been that, from the Pro 1, Pro 2, all the way up, that's always been the light range that we stay in. So it's not like a new thing of us being at like 50, between 59 and 61, we've always been there, so. Let's see, but yeah, pretty pretty nice stuff. Let's see, let's go full screen on this so we can kind of see again side by side. So you can just see how much wrap, like if you look at the the nose shadow, for example, between the, the two foot, you, start to, you still have a little bit of uh, shadowing here on the nose, and that four foot just wraps for days. Just super duper soft. It's a beautiful, beautiful light. This is a really, really great headshot setup too. Really easy clamshell. Uh, you could put it on my funky light stand rig if you want to, and I just got a, a one by three strip box there, so you have a little bit more control. So, really, really easy stuff. Clamshells, it's a really, really awesome way of doing, I'm gonna leave this up just so I can see any questions you guys have before I sign off. But the clamshell lighting setup is a really, really nice setup just because, one, if you only have one light source, you could do something like a reflector or a piece of foam core and totally get amazing results with really, really minimal gear. And then if you have a second light and you want a little bit more control over how much that light hits, once again, you could go and you know get a one by three strip box or you could do like the 1.3 by 1.3 square softbox. You wanna to try to stay, like I said, stay in the square realm just because it's gonna feel more like a reflected light source. Whereas if I was to throw the two foot octa underneath and then kind of do something that looked like a legitimate clam. So if like, if you were doing something like this, uh, yes, that is, you know, kind of clamshelly because it's, they're similar, but from, for the same reason that uh, people like to see round catch lights in people's eyes because it's a little more natural. The, um, from like the main light source, people also like to see that reflected light kind of more square, like it would be hitting the ground or something like that and kind of popping back up. So uh, once again, these all rules are made to be broken. Shoot it however you want to. If the only modifiers that you have at your disposal are a two foot octa and a two foot octa, Shoot with it the way that you want to. Uh, you can always uh, bring the power down a little bit more on the lower light, and that way it's going to, um, it'll kind of fade a little bit more into the into the subject's eyes. So you have a lot of options there. But really, really fun stuff. Let me see if you guys have any questions before I sign out, if there's anything else you want to see before we roll. Let's see. 
is the four foot octet OCF Allen? No, it's not. It is actually an RFI modifier. So um, once you get past two foot, it moves to our RFI line, and that's a three. We have a three, four, and a five foot. Uh, I have them all. I just like the. Um, actually, I don't have my three foot anymore. But I like. I have the four and five foot. But the four foot is just a really, really great all around size as far as I'm concerned. It's not not too big, not too small, but it's an RFI. Let's see. Is the grid for background only? Does it affect the subject? So the grid is probably, especially with the, the modifier, the grid's definitely gonna be more for the, controlling the, the light spill. Um, it shouldn't change the softness on the subject. So all the grid's gonna do is take that light and position it right where you want it. The size of the modifier is the thing that's gonna dictate the softness or the harshness of the light itself. So if, you know, if I have a, a two foot octa here and a two foot octa here with a grid, it's the same, it's the same softness. It's just going to point the light more to where I want it. I know I grabbed the beauty edition, not the octa, but so what's up? Dan, Dan's in the house. What's up, Dan? Dan spelled your name wrong, Caitlin. He said oops, but he still spelled your name wrong. I think she's offended. How dare you, Dan? It's Kate. That's cool. Is it is a new hat, Dan? It is a very, it is, it's, I've worn it, I've had it now for, I got it for Father's Day, so it's Father's Day new. Um, so cool. So awesome, guys, this is super fun. Thanks so much for, oh, you know what we didn't do? Let's do it real fast. I was gonna do the shot where we turned off the lower light uh, for the four foot octa, just so we could see if the bottom light even makes it, if the modifier is so big, the, the bottom light doesn't make a difference anymore. Once again, like I said, I suspect that the bottom light does make a difference, but I would still like to see. So, so once again, I'll just slide my handy dandy rig. You just make people sweat. Yeah, I'm kind of kind of a big deal when it comes to making light stand rigs. So, <laughs> you know, everybody out here is like, "Oh, Chris, how do you do this?" And he's like, "You know, this takes talent, guys. You know, a lot of thought, really, really caring, and stuff like that." I'm, just, you know, it's hard being me. Anyway, um, <laughs> so let's turn off the lower light. So go to B and hit head. Here we go, Caitlin. So three, two, one. Oh, I'll just grab focus. There we go. Three, two, one. So even though it's super soft, it does make a big difference. Cool. Thanks, Kate. So it's still a big, it's still a big, <laughs> this thing's gigantic. <laughs> so it does, it's gonna make a big difference. So even though you're using a gigantic light source, having that fill from below of the clamshell, you can really, you can really see kind of the difference maker in that. So let's go here and let's go here. We'll go full screen. And so even, once again, even with something like a four foot octa, which is gonna give you a ton of, a ton of wrap and a ton of fill, it's still having that second light there or a reflector of some sort to kind of bring that light back up in here and fill in some of these shadows. It's a big deal. And that's kind of what makes clamshell light so cool. It's a really, really, really easy setup. The light is beautiful coming out of it. And it requires minimal gear, honestly. Like I said, you can go with a piece of foam core or a nice reflector if you want something that, you know, I like using my reflector, especially on location because it obviously folds down really, really tiny. Um, but it's kind of however you want to do it. So before I sign out of this thing, let's see if you guys have any more questions for me and then I'm piecing out. Yeah, huge difference. Um, oh, what size seamless am I using? I think this is a four footer or five footer. I don't, it's like a four or five footer. I just have it on a, a quick little drop setup. It's what I run around with when I'm doing headshots on location. I have it in a couple of different colors. I also have gray, white, blue, red, and this like kind of tan color. So, um, sweet. I think we're good. So thank you all so much for hanging out with us uh, and going over uh, this type of lighting, talking about clamshell. We're gonna cover another headshot lighting style next week. So that way, if you, yeah, if you, especially in the world right now where, you know, unfortunately a lot of people are kind of looking for new gigs and stuff like that. I think headshots are gonna be a really, really big deal. And you've been asking for some more headshot lighting stuff, so that's what we're gonna do. So I think next week we're gonna, we're gonna be doing another headshot lighting style. And that way you can start adding more techniques to your toolbox. So if someone asks for something in particular, 
you can deliver that. So in the meantime, oh, I saw something pop up. Hey, Chris, sorry I missed out on most of this, but thanks. Hey, no problem, man. You can always go back and watch it. We keep it on YouTube and Facebook forever. So, but thank you all so much for coming and hanging out with me. If you have any questions about any of the gear that you've seen today, check the links in the description. Also, if you want a chance to win a, um, a, a an A1X, uh, you can do the uh, what's in my bag contest that we have going on right now. The link's also in the description. And if you have any other questions about anything, I think we're still doing the free backpack giveaway too. So if you're looking at buying anything, thousand bucks gets you a free core small backpack, which is my everyday user. So in the meantime, thank you so much, so much for hanging out with me. I will see you next week. Have an awesome weekend. Stay safe. Peace out.